Following on from the video I just did on Psalm 23, The Good Shepherd, I would like to just focus a little bit more on the parable of Jesus about the lost sheep that St. Luke talks about in chapter 15. And it's an interesting um, response from the heart to the heart. And it's, it goes like this, Jesus told them a parable and he said to them, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them, does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open spaces and does he not go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And living in a rural community here, we have lots of sheep and regularly they get lost. And then Luke goes on to say, and when he finds it, doesn't the shepherd joyfully put the sheep on his shoulders and go home happy and content knowing that his lost sheep has been found? And then he calls his friends and his neighbors and together he says to them let us rejoice come with me let's party let's have a barbie because I found my lost sheep and I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven before the Father Mother God the Lord Christ, Buddha, Mohammed, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, St. Francis, and all the wise ones and white eagle over one of us who surrenders our heart to God and repents of our arrogance, our selfishness, our deceit, and any wrongdoing that we may have done another to rob them of their peace. Won't there be a time of great celebration before God when one such person, such as me, who's willing to surrender and come home? And interestingly, there's a background to this story. All through the Old Testament, we see God being referred to as the Shepherd of Israel. God placed a large amount of trust, yes he did, and responsibility on the leaders of Israel, the chosen people. But time and time and time again, they failed him. Why do you think that was? What was the cause for their stubbornness? Is there a lesson that we can learn from, the, from them? God ended up denouncing these false shepherds and promised to send them a pure shepherd to lead and care for the sheep of Israel and provide a way for people to be saved from someone pressing the wrong nuclear button. So this shepherd that is referred to in St. Luke's Gospel is God's Son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, or known today as the Cosmic Christ. But why reference to sheep? It seems a derogative example that we're called sheep because I know from here living here in the country that sheep can give the impression of being really stupid sorry to use the negative expression but God uses the example sheep and Jesus reiterates that in the parable of the lost sheep well, in Psalm 23, we talked about the Lord is my shepherd. Well, we know 
this psalm is probably the most famous and well-known psalm and has been a firm favourite with Christians down through the ages. One reason this psalm is so well received is that it shows very simply and clearly how God is our protector and provider. Not Mystic Meg, not Gypsy Rose Lee, not winning the lottery. We sometimes fool ourselves, don't we, when we surround ourselves with opulence and materialism. And I don't have an issue with materialism, but I do when it fills the space that's left for God. Because you and I both know that we may save for many years for our favourite motorbike or car or what have you, but after a while the interest wanes, doesn't it? So here we have God calling us his sheep. And the theme comes up time and time again through the Bible when Jesus refers to himself as being the good shepherd and uses sheep and shepherd on a number of occasions, doesn't he? And most notably with the parable of the lost sheep. God's people are never illustrated as being great or mighty self-sufficient or independent are they i don't think so the only animal that is suitable for this comparison is the sheep who is dependent on the shepherd because they trust the shepherd i've seen them in the fields here when i allow myself out each day for one hour to walk on the estuary to look at the mountains smell the sea air and we have sheep grazing on the salt marshes and it's a wonderful sight particularly in spring after lambing when the young lambs get excited and get lost from their mother and they come running but then when the shepherd comes to check on the sheep and especially in the hot summer months of early july and august when the shepherd and his gang come along to shear the sheep they know the shepherd's voice and they come. There's a trust, isn't there? Yes. However, God thinks more of his followers than a shepherd feels towards his sheep, which is dealt with in the last two verses of Psalm 23. So what's the parable of the lost sheep about? Well, I can only speak from my heart. And I know, for best part of 58 years, and I'm 62 now, I lived a life of fear, low self-esteem. And I guess that was to do with my early upbringing in Catholic Ireland. And it was because I was exposed to a lot of negativity by the Irish Christian brothers. And then, of course, when I went through the training as a young monastic, as a nursing monk, there was that mindset that you're evil, you're sinful. And the times I would break from sleep at two in the morning and run to chapel and look at the Jesus on the cross. And I would cry out as a young lad of 17, Jesus, if you're real, will you get off that cross and love me because I'm so alone. And now, I've seen a different side to what dogma and religion have done and I'm free because I've come away from that and that's why I'm proud to say I'm part of a, a loving community of interfaith Franciscans and we don't do God, we don't talk about God because God is there. The fact that we're there in presence in human form, we know that we're loved. So God is Father, Good Shepherd. And he cares for us. And when we stray, he comes and he rescues us. And that's the abundance. That is the joy of being in service. 